Hello again, my wonderful internet friends. If you have been following this channel for a little while, you probably know that I am, uh, well, I'm pretty big into wearable technology. Uh, you know, I, I support the LG G Watch. I wear it all the time. I use a Fitbit all the time to record steps and everything. Well, Verizon reached out to me, and this coming Thursday, I'm going to be involved in a Google On Air Hangouts Google Hangouts on air, there we go, with Verizon and with a few other technology bloggers, and we're going to be talking about wearable technology, talking about things like, well, this device, the Garmin Vivo Fit, the Moto 360, the G Watch, the Android Wear devices, probably Apple's iWatch or Apple Watch, I guess they're calling it now, whatever other wearable type devices are out there, of course, things like Google Glass and maybe the Epson Mavario glasses I've reviewed in the past. Anyway, that's not the point of this video. If you are interested in seeing that hangout when it happens this Thursday, the 26th, I will put links on Twitter and on Google Plus and Facebook. You can find the links to all of my social media type things down in the video description. However, today we're going to take a look at just what comes in this box because honestly, Verizon, when they reached out, they just said, we're going to send you one of these to test out before the hangout. So uh, I, I haven't really done any reading up on it. The little bit on it that I have read, it kind of sounds an awful lot like the Fitbit One that I regularly carry around and wear all the time, except, as you can see, it goes on your wrist instead of clipping onto your, your belt or your pocket. So I thought I would just go ahead and open it, and while I'm opening it, we'll talk a little about it. You see here it does do steps, it does the time of day, it does your calorie estimates, and it has a sleep mode. So it sounds almost identical to the Fitbit One that I always wear, however, one big key difference is, supposedly, it has a one-year battery life, which would be a pretty significant difference over the battery life in the Fitbit. So in here we've got some product safety information, little generic, here's how you set things up kind of thing, and then the device itself. Ooh, it comes with a couple of bands and a little USB dongle. Teeny tiny little USB dongle. Wonder if that's a proprietary one. I'll have to find that out. But also, from what I understand, you should be able to pair this to a smartphone. I have not looked at their compatibility list to see if there's anything problematic about it. But this is one of the bands, in case you want a smaller one. And then there's the one that's actually on the device. There we go. Took a little bit of, little bit of doing, but that wasn't too bad. Alrighty, so here is the actual device. Go ahead and peel that off because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to leave a sticker on there. And there you go. It's bright, bright red, not normally a color I'd be wearing. Uh, I'll probably stick it on this wrist just so that I can have my G-Watch all the time and continue to use it. So let me go ahead and try to power it up. I'll just hold the button. It does say pair at this point, and I'm guessing I probably should have looked through the instructions to see. There we go, just very quick from the little quick start manual. You can do it via your computer or mobile. Go to garminconnect.com slash vivofit and get the Garmin Connect mobile app. I'll probably do that because I really don't want to put another dongle on my desktop. All right, I didn't have to go to their website. I just went ahead and searched in the Play Store. Garmin Connect mobile is available through the Play Store directly, so I'll go ahead and install it from there, and we're ready to go. Let's open it and see what it does says connect. We're going to have to create an account because I don't have one at this point. Now luckily you can sign in using any one of these social networks, so I'll just use Google+. And I hate to say it, that's a little bit of a bummer. It doesn't have the integrated authentication. You have to actually use the web view. From what I remember, that's a bit of a security no-no. All right, and that wasn't terribly difficult. Just had to give it a little bit of information. And now it says, do you have a Garmin device to connect? Yes, I do. Choose a category, we're going to say health and fitness, we're going to say Vivo Fit. There is supposed to be a Vivo Fit 2 as well, but this is just the first generation one. Let me go ahead and fill this out. Alright, so after filling that out, it says hold the pairing button until pair is display, or hold the button until pair is displayed. Alright, it says pair, searching for devices that are in pairing mode. You can read it a little better. Do you see code 0486? Yes, I do. So now it's setting it up. Now, the one thing I will say about this, first and foremost, the thing that I, I'm probably going to be a little perturbed about by it, is that because it is sitting across your wrist, uh, in order to look at it, you're going to have to do this instead of looking at it like a watch. Not that it's a really huge deal or anything, but uh, still, I, I just have that preference of being able to look at the device as if it were a watch, being able to see everything in a glance that way instead of having to look at it like this. It's not going to be a big deal or anything because when I look at my Fitbit currently, I have to take it off my pocket or look down at it, which is a really awkward angle. There we go. It is actually pairing at this point. It failed for whatever reason the first couple of times, but uh, at now it appears to be working appropriately. It is nice that it shows you these details. I've, I've used a lot of different wearables that 
they just say connecting or they say connected and that's about as far as you go with it. With this one I can actually look at the specifics of what's going on with it. And that's interesting, it's actually counting down on the, the Vivo Fit itself. Wonder what that means, maybe that's a, a timer count down to when I'm going to be done. And like I said, I have been using the Fitbit for quite a while, so I have a pretty good estimate as to how accurate this is. And I can compare this versus the G-Watch versus the Vivo Fit, just to sort of see how they all stack up next to each other. All right, that took a little bit of time, but it did say the device is paired at this point. There we go, it says connected. All over here it still says pair, sync complete. Hopefully I'm good to go. It says Garmin device disconnected. Well, I'm gonna have to spend a little bit of time with it to see if I can figure out why it won't stay connected, but there you go, there's the time, there's the, the date. Yeah, it is February 20th. Uh, then you've got zero, that's number of steps taken, because since I've turned it on I have not taken any steps. Goal of 7,500. My normal daily goal is 10,000, so I'll probably change that and then zero miles. So you can, oh, and the estimated calories burned based off of weight and time of day and things like that. And of course, I'm sure that will change based upon the, the level of activity that it measures as well. First impressions with this, I, I kind of like the display. It's an always on display. So instead of this one where I have to actually hit the button to see what's going on with this, I could technically leave it in steps mode and then I think it will stay there and then just keep you know, every time I look over at it, I can see I'm at this many steps. Yeah, there you go. I, I actually just took a little walk from one end of the house to the other and registered 35 steps. I did count and it was 34 or 35 steps, so it's pretty accurate, at least as far as a tiny bit of information is concerned. It shows how far I am from my goal, how many miles I've walked, and then the number of calories burned. It's not going to change based off of that, but yeah, and it stayed on the number 35. So. That's definitely interesting. It's a good first impression, and I do like the, the fact that it is an always on screen. Uh, I guess it's an e-ink or something to that effect, a, a transflective, something like that. But anyway, uh, I'll be using this over the next few weeks, and then, like I said, I'm going to be in that Hangout with Verizon this coming Thursday, the 26th, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll put links out on Google+, Twitter, and Facebook if you'd like to come see that. And I'm sure the video will be saved somewhere after the fact, so I'll make sure you guys have links to that as well. And then there will probably be a follow-up review of this after that. But that's going to be all for today. If you have any questions about this, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. If it's something that I think is, is good and interesting, I might try to bring it up during the Hangout as well. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you again next time.